Hello and welcome back to GCSE Potential. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Anki, the best flashcard making app out there. Now pretty much whenever people come up to me and ask me, how do you revise for your GCSEs? How do you get nice? I respond to them with two simple words. Well, three words actually. Anki and past papers. That's four words. Whoops. But pretty much Anki and past papers are the main way that you can get nines pretty easily. So past papers, I'll make a separate video on that, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Anki, a lot of people still don't know about, and it really frustrates me because Anki, honestly, it changed the game for me. It could take you from fives and sixes to nines in the space of like a month or two, and it's absolutely crazy. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what is Anki, why you should use it, and how to set it up. So let's get started. So firstly, Anki is a digital flashcard app. So instead of writing flashcards on pieces of paper or on cards, you can use them on your computer, your devices, your phone, etc. And Anki is the perfect flashcard app. Now you might have heard of Quizlet, which is one that you can use in the browser, which is still pretty good. But what separates Quizlet from Anki is that it uses something called space repetition. Now I'm going to put like a little diagram here. The space repetition is basically where Anki uses an algorithm and it sees how good you are at each separate question. And if you're really good at it, then it gives you it less often because they think you're quite confident with that question. But if you're really bad at it and you're less confident with the question, then they'll give it to you more frequently so you can understand it better and learn it quicker. So that's pretty much the basic concept of how it works. Another thing is that they give you flashcards according to this algorithm to try and ensure that you memorize it as effectively as possible. They don't want to constantly give it to you. You don't need to be doing something every single day to memorize it. There's a way to do it only certain amounts of days each week such that you'll be able to memorize it. And that's pretty much what Anki capitalizes on. So the second key concept is active recall. And it's pretty much what it says it is. Active recall is where your brain actively recalls information. So for example, if you're reading through a textbook, that's known as passive revision because you're just reading, your brain isn't really engaged. But if you're trying to answer some questions then your brain is actively trying to think of the answer and that's basically the main premise of how you're meant to revise effectively so how does Anki do this Anki is just flashcards right but the specific way you make flashcards is very very important I'll make a separate video on the art of making flashcards if that's already out you'll be able to like see it there or whatever but basically on the flashcards on the front of it there'll be a question and on the back of it there'll be an answer so you'll only see the question and you pretty much just have to think and drag the information out of your brain. And if you consistently do that, the neural connections become a lot stronger. I think it's the neural connections, but they become stronger each time you try and remember the answer. So eventually, because they're so strong, because you've remembered it so often, you find it so easy to regurgitate the answer. And that's pretty much how Active Recall works. Now, I have to convince you why you should use Anki instead of all the other alternatives. So one of the main alternatives people say is paper flashcards. Paper flashcards, oh, I have, I, have a, I have a lot to say about paper flashcards. This is just me. But paper flashcards, I think, are quite, they work, but they're not as good as they could be. So one of the main disadvantages of paper flashcards is that you have to pay for them. Anki is totally free, which is like incredible. And I'll talk to you about it later with the whole 25 pound app thing, because you do not have to pay that, you can do it on your browser. But one of the main disadvantages of paper flashcards is that you have to pay for them. Not only do you have to pay for the cards, you have to also pay for like using pens or whatever you use to write on. Um, and it's very inconsistent. People often get carried away with like writing fancy titles as well, which is just such a waste of time. But you know, you do you. Um, another advantage of Anki over paper flashcards is the fact that you can copy and paste images, which just makes life so much better. So for example, in biology, you have to know the locations of the glands. It's like the thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, etc. With um, paper flashcards, you're either going to have to draw that or print that out, which is just so long. But with Anki, literally in about a second or two, you can just copy and paste it from like BBC Bite Size. And that's pretty much all you need to do. On top of that, with paper flashcards, they can be quite hard to organise because everything's just all over the place. But Anki, as I'll show you in a minute, the, organis the organisational system is absolutely perfect. It makes it look so, so easy. And I guess one of the final benefits of digital flashcards instead of physical ones is that you can do them on any device and you can do it anywhere you don't want to be lugging around like hundreds and hundreds of flashcards with you but if you're on digital flashcards you can literally just have your phone you can have your laptop and you can be doing them on the way to school from school etc um, especially during exam season instead of having to bring in like huge amounts of flashcards that some of my friends had to I pretty much just had my phone so before exams like 
five minutes before my history exam was starting, I'd just be speed running the flashcards, making sure I'd memorize them. Now, another comparison that people make is Anki and Quizlet. Quizlet is very similar to Anki, but I think one of the main disadvantages is that Quizlet, a lot of it is behind a paywall. So I think there is sort of a space repetition thing on Quizlet, I'm not too certain, but you have to pay for that. But with Anki, it's totally free. Quizlet, another advantage is that you can find lots of people's pre-made decks, but a lot of people don't know that Anki also has pre-made decks. So you can just go on Anki web and you can search like AQA GCSE biology, and I'm sure there are lots of people who have already made decks. I'll soon probably be selling my uh, Anki flashcards too. Um, so keep, uh, keep out for that, watch out for that. But um, yeah, that's one of the main advantages of Quizlet compared to Anki, but I feel like it's sort of counterbalance. Another advantage that people say of Quizlet is that you can use it on the web but as I'm going to show you in a bit you can also use Anki on the web and you can use it on every device so that's not really an advantage. At the end of the day what I think is really important to consider is that Anki is just everything is free and it's just a lot easier to use in my opinion once you know what you're doing and the functionality is basically endless with Anki. Like you could do so much but quiz is very very limited so I'll talk to you more about that later but overall what I'd say is Anki helped me do incredibly well it helped all of these people do very very well i pretty much just get like a collation of all the different study tubers who have used it or whatever and if you want to get the top grades it's proven to work well so i'd very much suggest using anki so let's switch on to learning how to set up anki all right so now we're going to get started and i'm pretty much just going to show you how to install anki as well as using anki across your multiple devices so although you make your flashcards mainly on your computer your laptop or your mac you can use them also on your phone. So let's get started. We want to go over to um, our web browser and search Anki. And usually it's the first thing that appears. So Anki, powerful, intelligent flashcards. And then you want to go over to download. And here we have multiple versions. Now it depends on what device you're using. So because I'm using a Windows laptop, I'm going to download the Windows one. But if you're using a Mac, you download Mac, etc. Um, there are two different versions here. QT6 seems to be the most up-to-date one. It does look a little bit imposing, but um, it's somewhat self-explanatory. So let's just click on that. Um, yeah, just take a second for that to download and then we should open it. Bosh. So pretty much this is just gonna guide us through actually setting up Anki. Um, it's a very simple set of procedure, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, a lot of things come up on my screen just saying, are you allowing it to make changes? Um, so here's what you get. Let me minimize this. It's a little bit easier to see everything. Um, we're going to install it, yeah, just in a random folder. And now it's getting started, so it's just going to install Anki. Right, so now that that's done, uh, you can open up Anki, and Anki is now fully installed. Um, one of the things that I think you should change immediately, this is just my own preference, is if you go over to Preferences, you can see it says Theme, Light. I much prefer Dark Mode. Um, it's a lot better when you're revising late at night. Um, you can barely see me in my camera now because the light's gone. But um, yeah, just generally, I much prefer Dark Mode, but that's not too big of a deal. So this user interface, I'm going to quickly pretty much show you how it works. So the bottom of the screen, it says create deck. So for each different subject, we're going to have a different deck. Um, your hierarchical system, how you like manage your subjects and your topics and your flashcards within those, um, it totally is up to you, but I'm going to just show you how I do it. So let's start if I was doing GCSE, right? So I do AQA, GCSE, Biology. So the exam board, um, the level that you're doing, so GCSE or A level, and then uh, the subject. And then within that, you have two papers, right? You have paper one and you have paper two. So let's say we're going to do paper one flashcards. And one of the really neat things you can do is you can drag. So if you do that, so we now have AQA GCC biology and then a child of that is paper one. And then within paper one, there are multiple topics. Um, I think I've, I think it was the first topic should be uh, cell biology, but it's not that deep. So if I write cell biology here and I can drag that underneath paper one and perfect. That's pretty much exactly how my Anki used to look. So we have AQA GCSE biology and then within that we have paper one. And then within that we have topic one, cell biology. Now if we click on there, we can add a flashcard. So all you have to do is click add and it's pretty much as simple as this, the front of the, uh, the flashcard and the back. So on the front of it, I'm gonna make a video uh, on the art of making flashcards because I think it's really important. A lot of the time people say like, just write notes and stuff like that. That is pure waffle. You do not wanna be writing notes. You want to have a simple question at the front and a short answer on the back. So for example, let's do a definition. What is osmosis? That's the flashcard I'm sorry about that. But if we click add, the flashcard is now contained with our Anki. So if you want to study the flashcard, you can see it says one new because we made one new flashcard. You can click study now. And the question on the front is what is osmosis? So I think back, I think, hmm, do I know the definition of osmosis? Now, because I've already done GCSE biology, I find this really easy. 
So um, if you click the space bar or you click show answer, um, it gives you the answer. Now, if you, you could see at the bottom that there are four different options, right? If you click again, that means you found it really, really hard and you just didn't know the answer. So it'll give you the flashcard again. And this is based on the spaced repetition algorithm, which I mentioned earlier. You also have hard. So if you did get the answer, but it took you quite a bit of time, then good if you got it fairly quickly, and then easy if it was like bish bash bosh. So I found this really easy, so I'm going to click four. And that means because I found it so easy, it'll give it to me in the next few days because they think I know it quite well, so I don't need to go over it sooner. Now, you might notice that the flashcard has disappeared. And that's one of the main th oops, and that's one of the main things that people find really, really like concerning. Like they've just made flashcards and then they all disappear, but they're not actually gone. It's just because as you're only going to see the flashcard in a few days time because you find it quite easy, Anki has pretty much just shoved it away and kept it in storage. If you want to see the flashcards in storage, you can do that super easily. So all you have to do is click browse and you can look at the left side of the screen here. If all the different subjects would come up on the left, but because we only have flashcards for biology right now, it only has biology. So we have what is osmosis and on the back it says that. Now another really cool thing you can do is you can add images. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. You can just copy them off, in, off, off Google and just like click paste over here and they'd show up. But um, that, I'll probably make a separate video on that. But yeah, that's the main gist of using Anki. A few other things which you need to know. Um, the sync button, now this is very, very important. Once you set up Anki, it is absolutely vital that you make an account. If you don't make an account, it means all your Anki files, so all your cards, will be stored on the computer that you set them up on. Now, a very big issue with this is if your computer, for instance, you lose your computer or if something goes wrong, all your flashcards will be gone. But wait, but wait, there's a solution. Um, if you make an Anki account, everything is synced to the cloud. So you might have heard of Google Drive or OneDrive. Everything is stored on some random servers elsewhere. And this is totally free. So um, as you can see, I'll click the sync button and it says, please sign up for an account. So all you have to do is head over to there and it's really easy to sign up for an account. Um, I won't do that now because I already have an account, but it's very, very simple. But once you've signed up, you just need to put your um, ID there and your password there and then it totally syncs everything. So after you finish making a flashcard, all you have to do is click the sync button and then all the flashcards which you made will be sent to the cloud and stored there. So this another very big benefit of this is that you can access your flashcards from any device. So now, okay, so for ease, I'm going to be doing this on my laptop, but it'll be the same exact thing that you're going to want to do on your phone. Now, this is very, very important. If you have an Android phone, so that'll be like a Samsung, a Sony, a HTC, then you can download the app for totally free. But if you have an Apple phone on the App Store, it says it costs like £20 or something. Do not pay that because you can use your flashcards very easily on your phone without paying on your iPhone. So here's how you're going to do it. If you go over to your web browser on your phone, so Safari, you just want to search Anki. And you can click on the first link once again. And on the top right of your phone screen, it will say Anki Web, as it says here. So if you click on Anki Web, um, it'll come up with this page and you can click Login. So the, the thing that we just talked about was syncing flashcards. So with the same email, you're just going to want to log in to um, your Anki. So, so here we go. Uh, these are some of my older flashcards, I think. Um, so biology, I forgot to delete them. But pretty much all my flashcards are now synced between both my computer, my phone and the cloud. So if I want to go over a flashcard, I can just click on biology and identify the glands in the human body. Oh, God. I just did my GCSEs as well. Okay, so you have the thyroid gland, which is in your neck. You have the adrenal gland, which is above your kidney, something like that. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, just based on this, I can say whether well, it's good, hard, easy. Again, I'll say it's pretty hard. But um, yeah, that's pretty much that. And if I click back to Dex, everything automatically syncs. So that is pretty much Anki in a nutshell. That's how to use it on your laptop or, your, or any computer device, as well as your phone. So what I tended to do is on the way to school and on the way back from school, um, during like peak exam season, on my phone, I'd go over to my Anki and just continually go over my flashcards. It's really good if you have like long bus journeys to school and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we've come to the end of the video and pretty much what I want to say is Anki and past papers, they go hand in hand and they pretty much saved me during my GCSEs. I can conclusively say that to get like grade nines, the top of the top, all you really need is Anki and past papers. So pretty much what I did was I read through a topic, let's say for history. History, there's not really much of a concept. It's pretty much just a memory test. So um, I'd get my textbook out. I'd read through my textbook so I could just like sort of understand what's going on. And then I'd just make a flashcard. So who was 
um, what were some of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles? So what were the financial terms of the Treaty of Versailles? That would be on the front of the flashcard, then the back of it, it just say the financial terms. And I'll just do that for basically make most of the key points in the textbook, stuff that's not really stuck in my brain yet, and stuff that I need to memorise. By doing that, I was started to memorise the information. And then when it came time for past papers, I was pretty much just regurgitating the information and it worked so well. Like genuinely, towards the end of exam season, I thought I'm not doing enough. I saw my friends doing seven, eight hours a day and I was like, oh my God. I was doing like two hours a day max. Some days I just didn't revise. Like I did a bit of anky and that was it. But what I soon uh, came to realize is that if you work effectively, you don't need to work that hard. So I wasn't working that hard because I didn't even realize how good anky really was. I just didn't need to work that hard. Anki makes life so, so easy for you. I cannot talk about Anki enough, but yeah, I'll pretty much end the video here. If you have any questions or anything that I failed to mention in this video, make sure to drop it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to watch it, uh, watch it, reply to it. Um, if you are a bit stuck with Anki still, um, I'll also put some other YouTube tutorials which I found useful when setting up Anki. And <laughs> that's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a bit. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found this useful too.